Mike Giambattista. I'm here at my second high tech today in Orlando with Shane O'Flaherty from Microsoft and new to the round table this year, Cedric Laurie from Freedom Pay. Welcome, we hope you enjoy this round table. We're looking forward to the conversation. Last year we spoke at length about the state of hospitality just coming out of pandemic the hesitations, the new pressures, the technological opportunities. Here we are a year later, almost a year later, and I think it'd be interesting to look back and see what's changed. Attitudes within the industry, opportunities, challenges, and how the technologies that both of these companies represent can help get operators through those. So Shane, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Cedric, same, really appreciate it. Let's, let's just talk about the post-pandemic landscape for hospitality a little bit. What does it look like? And, and you see this from a very high perspective. Cedric, you have a, a corner on the universe that's very unique. So I'll just put it out to Shane first and then maybe Cedric. What does post-pandemic hospitality even look like? Well, I think it's, it's a, as a consumer, it's a, it's a very challenging space. Uh, whether it's an airline or a hotel, I think the biggest issue is labor. Uh, and the lack of labor. Labor has moved on to different industries. Hospitality used to be a safe place to work and uh, now the government can theoretically shut you down tomorrow. So people have moved into different industries. So what we're running into in the airline sector and the hotel sector, it's, you know, I may have a 300 room hotel, but I can only operate 200 rooms because I can't get the staff to do it. Um, so that all in airlines, same, same issue around, you know, both airport staff and airline staff and pilots and all that. So if one thing breaks, then it just has a cascading negative effect on the entire ecosystem. So, but, but at the same time, those are opportunities because the hospitality industry is one of the least, uh, uh, how would you say, technologically advanced industries comparative to others. Right. And so how do you bring automation into the forefront of that to, if you have less staff, how do you drive more automation, operational efficiency to make it easier for uh, the employee? And how do you invest in the employees? And that's um, that's a big challenge that we've seen in other industries that you know moving fast into. Airline sector really did a great job during the pandemic investing in automation. Hotel industry is just beginning that process. So when I say automation, I'm saying mm -hmm. on the employee side because labor is the biggest challenge, continues to face. Demand is great, at yeah. least on the leisure side. And demand is picking up on the on the uh, business side, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, there's there's a lot of challenges ahead. So we're going to talk about the concept of leisure here in a minute. But Cedric, what's your take? You know, as as not only somebody who who supplies and supports this industry, but as somebody who travels a lot for business. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, one thing that came out of the pandemic was our merchants were forced to really look at their tech stacks and adopt you know new ways of doing business. So whether that was a restaurant having QR codes as a menu or other you know different facets of business that they weren't used to they were forced to start to adjust and I think as a consumer it's about choice you know it's no longer you go and you experience a hotel in one way I think now we're seeing this kind of divergence where a hotel now has to really adjust to cater to different types of experiences whether that's I don't want to see anyone. I just want to check in with a mobile key. I want to go to the self-service market, go right to my room. So completely self-service, but also maintaining for those consumers who want that, you know, one-on-one -on -one white club service concierge. So our merchants are trying to leverage technology to kind of cater to those newly developing types of consumers. So that's what we're seeing a lot of is how do you do that across your tech stack efficiently in real time to offer this seamless experience to everybody and not get killed in the process either by because of the time involved or the investment involved. Right. So it's a balancing act. Right. I, I think it is. I think I think that's one of the things that Freedom Pay brings to the table is their hardware facilitates that. Yeah. Over the long term. But I wanted to talk about the pace of the digital transformation because to me that's fascinating. I know that um, prior to pandemic, as you said, hospitality might have been a little bit slower to adopt uh, upcoming technologies, but they were forced into that really when the pandemic showed up. But since then, what are your what are you seeing out there? Is, has this been kind of like, oh, wait, a realization we have to really move ahead at pace and get our things done? Or is there still some hesitation in the industry? I'm speaking very broadly here, but um, and people are still trying to figure out, you know, maybe the, I can band aid this situation. 
Yeah, I think, I, and like you said, it, I mean, it's a balancing act that they're navigating right now. I think the, what one of the better things that came out of the pandemic is the business side of the audience in, the, in these large hospitality corporations and IT, uh, it, I would say before the pandemic, didn't really talk a lot. Or if, if the business side had an idea, they went to IT, IT said no, they said, oh, okay, move on to next, because business was great, so why right. mess up? Right. So what we've seen is the two of them come together, um, trying to reimagine their business and with all the changes taking place with the consumer sentiment and what the consumer wants. So, so I, I think what we're seeing now is them beginning the process of making decisions on what to do. And then the other side of the coin is, you know, um, you know, go back to the staffing, the IT organizations have been decimated. Right. So now they're trying to build back up <clears throat> those organizations. So it's, it's now they're making strategic decisions on, okay, I have 10 partners. I really only need three partners. Who do I go with and who can give me uh, 10 partners worth of service, 10 partners worth of service. And, uh, and then as the pandemic, you know, as the travel increases, you know, then I have more money and funds to do it. So I think the hospitality industry is starting to make good decisions around their tech and where they're going uh, from an implementation perspective. Have they done that yet? Uh, they're still kind of at the front end of that journey. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I think, you know, at least now they're definitely leaning in and listening to the bigger ideas. And I think then the question is just, I hear you, I understand the need, but how, how do I consolidate across my entire organization? How do I, where do I begin? And not only that, but you know, with the pent up demand for travel, now it's all about, I have this consumer on site. How do I get he or she to leverage not just a few of my services, but everything? How do I upsell, cross sell and make sure that I instill, you know, that experience to where I can upsell, but also start to develop that loyalty with the consumer as well. So again, it's, they like the ideas, they're big ideas, but the question of how do we do this from a technology standpoint, from a personnel standpoint, how do we pull it all together um, to make a great experience for the consumer? I think there are a handful of things that you've brought up that are, that are really interesting. Um, I should know the answer to this question, I'm gonna ask it anyway. Um, you know, as a business traveler, I see firsthand the front of house struggles with personnel. It's there, you know. Uh, every hotel that I've been to in the past six months is, is let's just say, um, and not pejoratively, but they're duct taping their solutions up there, trying to do what they need to do. Uh, what I think is really interesting in this environment is we're all talking about the struggles in the back of house. When the IT departments were decimated because right. people just left. I mean, those are, those are really, you can't just buy those solutions. You can't just find technology to solve all of your personnel problems, your back of house tech. Right. But yet some of these technologies that you supply and support and some that you supply and support actually do do that. And I wanted to talk about some of that a little bit. What are some of the specific solutions that Microsoft and Freedom Pay are delivering to help hospitality operators overcome those challenges? Yeah, and, and just to back up from your original conversation uh, as you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking, my, so my daughter is 21 years old, doing an internship at a hotel this summer, and um, she comes in running part of the, her thing is the front desk, and uh, she goes into the front desk system, and I said, so how did day one go? She goes, that f I've never seen anything like it, that it's like the screens are like, they're not user friendly, it's horrible. I, I've never even seen a computer like that in my life. You know, so the technology, the underpinning of technology is it's in some cases very archaic still in the industry that they need to modernize. And so where Microsoft plays uh, a lot with our number, our partner ecosystem that we work with, um, you know, one of our largest partners in the travel space is Amadeus. And Amadeus is in the hotel space, the airline space, the airport space, but working with them to try to reimagine what uh, the booking experience is like. I think we, we talked about now, in the past, you've sold a hotel room. You know, now you're trying to sell an experience and drive more ancillary revenue from the consumer when they're on property, pre-property and all that. So how do you reimagine the booking experience for the consumer to drive more value from each individual? Um, and then how do you integrate the platforms into each other? So as a given example, if I'm a business traveler, I'm in my Outlook and I pop on my calendar, New York uh, conference, whatever conference it is, you know, how do we, how do we, um, use technology to automate that. And so the AI agent will come back and say, hey, looks like you're going to New York. Shane, um, you know, based on your profile, should I book this American flight and should I have you, or United flight, or should I have you stay at the Marriott Hilton Hyatt? Um, and so we're trying to automate those processes as well as part of that experience, but integrate things into 
our products and services with the travel ecosystem. And then use you know, some of these great capabilities to say, hey Mike, you haven't seen John in nine months you probably should pick up the phone and call him. Mm -hmm. So how do you do next best action, not only in the sales process, but around kind of developing further social capital, both internally with your network and then externally with uh, your clients? And how do you use AI as part of that to, um, you know, think of the next best action for you based on who you are and what you're doing? So it's really embedding technology in what exists today but then blending it all together and then trying to drive um, you know, more action from the consumer because sometimes you forget. I haven't talked to Mike in, could be two years all of a sudden right. and it Last blink of an eye. Back. Yeah, it's a blink of an eye, it goes away, but how do we get these reminders in there as well using tech to drive that? And then on the hotel side, I think for Microsoft, we're more of a platform company. So it's either around the customer experience, the employee experience, or around your data and data state. And how do you get your arms around your data state? because that's um, the power that you have to drive a better customer experience and employee experience if you get your arms around your data state. And that's kind of the foundational elements associated with it all. Well, when that technology becomes available, I absolutely want to be on the beta list. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool stuff. Cedric, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the ways that Freedom Pay is helping to advance the hospitality world into you know, the brave new world. Yeah, well, I think Shane, you know, brought up kind of the key element, which in my mind is if you're going to make all these decisions, it probably starts with data, just because if, you know, educated guests can get you so far, but until you can use data in an evidence-based way, it's hard to make very efficient decisions. And especially when you're coming out of the pandemic and every consumer counts and you're dealing with personnel shortages and all these other issues, having that data element to help guide your decisions is pretty critical at this component. So. Um, you know, one thing that we're working with merchants on is how do I answer the question of I have data everywhere and as channels become more fragmented on a daily basis, how do I bring all of my data together under one roof so that I can even begin to start to analyze that data and either make decisions based on my consumers and enhancing their experience or again, the, the personnel shortages and dealing with my own staff and making sure that you know, I'm, I'm maintaining the home, if you will. So that's the biggest question that, that we essentially help in the beginning is how to consolidate all of that data so that they can start to effectively make decisions internally or for the consumer or just in the future when they're expanding. Interesting. I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the changes in consumer expectations over say the past two years, let's call it three years since the pandemic became a factor because they, they changed radically in so many ways and in so many other ways they kind of, uh, kind of just cemented themselves. Um, those expectations that were kind of cool things to have at one point now are necessities. You can't do business without them. But um, you know, if you, if you just take a look at how consumers are responding to these kinds of things, uh, it seems to be all about ease. The safety factor, of course, it's still there, but maybe not quite as prominent as it was and important as it was. We'll see that may be changing as we speak. But um, Let's talk about how you, from your, your distinct perspectives, are seeing consumer habits change and their expectations change and maybe what the hospitality world needs to do to address them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, well, back to your point of this contactless travel, this contactless experience, there's a, you know, a significant push for that, whether it's you know, kiosk, mobile check-in, you know, ordering from your phone, room service, can order, anytime, anywhere within the property, both for on-site and then off-site. So the idea that Uber Eats or someone else, DoorDash comes into the hotel, that becomes more commonplace. So it, essentially your home experience uh, that you have, that you've created during the pandemic, then is that's extended into the hotel and you treat your hotel room or hotel as a home. So anything around ease, convenience, get me what I want, when I want it, delivered to my door. Um, I don't necessarily need the human interaction as much uh, anymore, but when I want it, I need it to be good and yeah. perfect. And so I think that the, the drive for the consumer, and you know, maybe I don't need my hotel room clean tonight. You know, I'm happy to opt in. Um, so that whole mind shift has, has changed where um, you're, you're less apt to, uh, your requirements from a physical perspective have decreased, but your digital requirements have increased dramatically. Yeah, exponentially. Yeah, completely exponentially. Exponentially. yeah, and I think you hit on you hit it on the head. The word is convenience, because now 
I think the table stakes have changed. I think before it was very innovative to have a hotel key for your door, and now it's almost as if if you don't have that, you're actually way behind. And now I think it's about these very immersive ecosystems within the app where I can do everything. I can make reservations, I can you know, get services, all these other things, DoorDash is a great example. And so I think having that digital presence is now where we're finding a lot in the lodging space. You have to have you know, a robust app in order to be able to start to cater to this new digitized consumer. Yeah, and I think, I think we'll be more purposeful in our, at least business side, sure. in, our, in our trips and making decisions to go on trips. Right. And then when we go on the trip, it'll be very purposeful you high know, expectations, high expectations in and out, but uh, it will be very purposeful because I can now make the call. In the past, when I want to, someone said, hey, I need you in X, you know, I, had, I said, sure, I'll be there. And now I could say, eh, you know, I'll do this over Teams. Uh, and they'll say, oh, okay, that's no problem. Uh, when in the past, they said, no, I need you there. Um, so that, that, that balancing act is taking place. So when I'm on my trip now, it will be very more purposeful than in the past. Not that they weren't purposeful in the past. But that, what that also means, though, is that when you do go to that hotel, they need to make sure that you have literally a premium experience right. because you do have that ability to be remote now. You can take these calls remotely through Teams. Say, this, is, this is too much of a pain. Right. You can do it through Teams. Right. But if you know that you know, your experience is going to be top-notch and, and there's a little bit more for the consumer, then, again, it's how do I pull those consumers in, make sure they're using all my services. And, I mean, it's, it's a new day. And so it's really on the hotel to provide that premium experience so that you keep coming back and you choose them over another. We were, we were looking at data recently, this is you know, probably about 30, 45 days ago, that analyzed consumer expectations uh, by category. Um, and then they looked at um, operators within that category and how well they were meeting or not meeting those consumer expectations. What was really interesting though to me was that over time, Consumer expectations are, you know, it's just a, a straight curve. You can see where they're going. Uh, unless something dramatic happens, they're just going to continue going. Um, operators, brands, uh, merchants, their curve is more like this. It's yeah. just, uh, you know, which creates this, this widening gap Gulf, of expectations, yeah. but, but also opportunity, as you said. Well, and I, I think it, just like technology, the technology is going like this, and then organizations are going like this, right. and they're moving like this pace, and technology is there. So there's a huge gap between the technology that exists today, their ability to engage with that technology, and then corporations or hospitality companies' um, ability to take advantage of it. And, and that's a big cultural issue and a leadership <laughs> issue to the idea of adopting technology, trying it, failing fast, moving on, learning, moving, learning, moving, learning, moving. And how do, how do you as an organization, a culture, adopt that framework? Um, because if it works, if it doesn't, if it works, then don't break it. But, you know, you, you kind of have to break it yeah, to, to, to your point of hit that consumer expectations because how quickly they're rising. Yeah. But it also goes back to, we see a lot of merchants that, you know, they see that slope, but again, it, it begs the question, well, how do I get around that in an effective way that's not going to cost me the entire business on a little bit of a gamble for, you know, an innovative idea. And so they see it. That's why we're starting to have these big high level discussions with this is what I want to do. It's a big idea, but they do recognize that, you know, they have to start to bridge that gap or else they're going to be stale. 5G. Uh, if you're in the technology world, it's on everybody's minds, everybody's lips. Uh, hospitality, whereas we're just the very beginning of what this could really mean, I think hospitality could be one of the most fascinating industries where it gets deployed. Because if speed is no issue and bandwidth is no issue, if those are just not even considerations anymore, what could a fully digitized, real-time customer experience look like? <clears throat> so, because we don't have answers and it's not real yet, this is more about what ifs. What do you think? Well, I mean, I, I think the uh, there's two sides of the coin. One is on the, I would say, on the operation side. So the idea that with 5G in a property, you basically create a, you have a persistent digital twin of that property and you can operate it using predictive maintenance and various things like that with IoT sensors. So the idea that you can actually look at something and digitize it, simulate it, and drive operational efficiency throughout the hotel. So if the door battery is not working, if the TV is broken, 
or the temperature gauge is off, how do you fix that before the consumer has to encounter it? And that's just the speed of data coming back through. And so, and that enhances the customer experience. Yeah. On the customer side, um, you know, uh, one missing element of the entire industry is uh, when a customer's on property, you know, how do you present them with content in real time, microtransactions of content in real time to make their journey a better journey and provide kind of anticipatory digital content. Um, so if I dine at the restaurant, how do I get that data out right away that says, hey, next time, you know, this evening, you know, it looks like you went to an Italian restaurant for, for lunch. This evening, why don't we try a French restaurant? but it's the amount of how do you pull that data quickly uh, and seamlessly in real time. So it's kind of this real time persistence. And then if you talk about the, I don't know, the metaverse, you know. Somebody and, had to go there. And Somebody had to, bring someone had to bring it up. I mean, this digitization or this immersive worlds that you can either enter into, uh, simulations using, you know, uh, understanding processes that they do now in warehouses, trying to get a package. How do I get it out quicker? Uh, so how do I do simulations? Um, Footfall, traffic flow of consumers, where they're going, what are they doing, how do I adjust? So all of that, uh, and then of course the immersive experience of video games, how do I bring that uh, so a person can game anytime, anywhere in my hotel, they won't have to worry about bandwidth, they can pick up their game that they had at home, it's like a Netflix, but now they can pick up their mm -hmm. Xbox game uh, and, and start playing anywhere in the hotel. So anything that you want to do, you can do. And that to me is a, an important part of that customer experience that's, uh, that's amazing. And, and then how do you make on a employee side, property side, how do you make more digital decisions as opposed to subjective decisions? And we see this a lot where I've been operating the hotel space for 30 years, I know what to do, but you know, could you do it better? Is there a better way? And we do that on the airline side where you have an, an operations of a day of operations for an airline and you know, people say, hey, we had a great day. And then we're asking, okay, you did have a great day, but could you have had a better day? Well, what does that look like? Well, let's run the model of the data around it, machine learning models and say, hey, based on that weather pattern that came in, if I give you 15 more minutes back in a day, based on your ability to grab the data, can you make a better decision? Sure. Um, so again, it's all around the data and that ability to data circulate in uh, persistent real time. Yeah, you touch on some interesting things because, you know, as consumers, we're living in an on-demand world now, and the expectation is I can get whatever I want at the click of a button right away, and so you have to have that speed to be able to cater to that. And then uh, I think you brought it up already on the operator side, how do we get as real time as we can with information? Because that was a great example. What if we know that Shane paid for his parking and has checked into the hotel, but for some reason we don't ever see him making any types of payments at my restaurant, at my food establishments, he's probably going off site. So how do I now bring him back into my ecosystem? Maybe it's through loyalty, maybe it's through incentives. And then you have to have that speed to be able to push out that content to Shane to say, hey, did you know we have a Michelin star restaurant? Here's an incentive or just informational. And so to have that speed and those different platforms and channels is absolutely critical um, to really capture that 5G space. It's gonna be a fun and really interesting next five years as that kind of fully blossoms out into this industry and so many others. Um, I don't know if you can hear, but the, the room here just got a little louder. Uh, they've opened the doors to high tech. So probably a good time to say thank you to both of you for your time and insight. And uh, hope we can do this again next year. Thank you. Yeah, thanks thanks for so much. Us. Appreciate it. Cedric, Shane, it's good to see you both again. How are you? Good to see you, Mike. You know, uh, high tech this year was quite an experience. We, we had a chance to uh, experience a, a whole new level of, of activity there compared to the year before. Um, but I wanted to acknowledge uh, both of your sponsors, one of mine, Freedom Pay and Microsoft, and, and pulling this whole thing off and putting it together. If you can't tell uh, from our backgrounds, we're in different locations today. 
Um, the original conversation you just saw was recorded at High Tech in Orlando about two and a half weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago at this point. But we've been fielding questions from that session ever since, and we have a few more that came through today. So I wanted to spend just a few minutes, if we can, just answer a few of those. Um, they are they don't appear to be directed to anyone in particular, so we'll just throw them out there, and uh, and you can both take a crack at this. The first one: What are some of the earlier slash easier steps that hospitality operators can implement? to kickstart their digital transformations. And why don't we just start with you, Shane, see what you think about that. Well, I mean, I, I think, uh, let's say on the consumer side, um, which is probably the most important is around um, consumer data, is really taking your consumer data based on all the different silos it sits in, is stitching that together so you have a more robust profile of that individual. And then your whether they're rewards members or non-rewards members, you know, how do you have a holistic picture of 100% of your consumers? and then create probabilistic index on how then you market to them. And with that, you're gonna find a uh, tremendous ROI associated with your outbound marketing efforts. So that's on the top end of the funnel. And then on the bottom end of the funnel really is a lot related to creating that smart hotel, um, you know, and the idea of connecting the systems together to have real-time visibility in there, but start kind of at a foundational level and move up to ensure that you're employees of information at their fingertips. They have the right tools. Um, and I think from even some of the research my, Microsoft did about six months ago, the employees feel like the hotel companies have invested more in consumer-based technology tools as opposed to you know their tools that they use on a day-to-day -day job. So the idea of how do I bring people back into the workforce, um, you know, I have to give them digital tools that they're familiar with uh, in today's market, not from 10, 15 years ago. Um, to help drive more a sense of inclusivity with them, with what they're doing, their work, their culture, and various things like that. Cedric, I'll toss that one back over to you from your corner of the world. What do you see? Yeah, um, I think it depends where the hotel is in their journey, right? You know, for those who are really just starting out in this transformation, I think it's about establishing that digital presence, whether that's mobile app, whether that's you know online websites, but just making sure that not only do you establish that, but you also create that omni-channel experience for the consumer so that they can interact with your brand the same way in those digitized experience that they uh, do when they're on premises. And then you know, for those merchants that are a little bit more down this journey of digital transformation, I think that's when to basically what Shane said, where once you start to have those multiple channels starting to become part of your business, ensuring that you're tying all of them together because, because then there's the data element, right? Then it's how do I tie together all these points so that I can study the information and make business decisions based off that. So kind of twofold. So so um, what I'm hearing, and I'm boiling both of your, your comments down, is that it's... it's uh, primarily maybe a function of, of digital maturity, you know, how far are they on before they can start considering where they should go next. next yeah, and, I, I, and one of the underlying elements of all this is movement to the cloud, um, a movement away from on-prem solutions uh, and applications that you can move to the cloud, move to the cloud, because that allows for scalability and up and down. Um, th that's a precursor to anything that our discussion here, and, th and that allows for you know, continuity and connectivity with your data, data state. Well put. Uh, we have a, an audience question here. If you look at properties like Resorts World in Vegas, they have perfected the pay plus grab plus go model with their food halls and some of their shops. What types of ways can that be rolled out across things like parking, event tickets, or other venues? Thoughts? Uh, I, it, just this concept of you know, when you think of like the Amazon Go stores or the various things like that, this idea of automation, there's an investment up front, but the ROI we've seen, whether that could be, you know, it could be a hotel sundry store instead of having someone buy a candy bar and then walk to the front desk and then pay for it. You know, can they walk in, swipe their credit card and then uh, the cameras basically look at your gate, not specifically your face, and they're determined you can kind of walk back out and and there's proven ROI associated with that of 20, 30, 40% uptick um, we've seen in pop-up kind of automated stores. So movement in that direction, um, there's some great partners. Uh, AFI is one of Microsoft's partners, but there's great partners out there that can provide this automated process for allow you to provide more of a contest experience. So I'm, I'm all in on that technology, uh, regardless of whether it's a sundry store, 
or a different type of ancillary thing on property. But how do you speed someone through the process much quicker? They're probably going to buy more. And then it helps uh, with the challenging issues associated with labor in today's market as well. Sure. Sure. Cedric, thoughts? Yeah, I would echo what Shane said. It's it's a new day and there's various types of consumers. And so we're definitely having more and more conversations about this self-service notion within logic where maybe I go to that market because I arrived too late. So the restaurants are closed, but I still have a food option available. That merchant now still gets to capture that revenue um, and still give that good experience to the consumer uh, to make sure that, you know, whenever you arrive or however you like to shop or eat or what have you, um, you do have that experience. So we're definitely seeing a lot more asks from the market around leveraging technology to help this kind of self-service nature across kiosks, across markets, um, across their entire state, really. And I'm, I'm also thinking of uh, some of the middleware that I'm now familiar with through Freedom Pay that enables that kind of scalability and uh, and all the front end integrations that that I it's hard to say future proof uh, those kinds of things, but it certainly adds to the flexibility and keeps investment costs, especially the upfront ones, way down. So um, I'll move on to this one. I, I'm I'm particularly fascinated by this just because it hits me. But five G sounds so exciting, but realistically, when do you expect that technology to be available and implementable? Yeah, that's a big question. I think that, you know, with 5G, just from an infrastructure standpoint, you need uh, more transmitters than you do 4G. So just the rollout is going to be a little more labor intensive. But it's interesting because I was reading just last week, Qualcomm and a few others in the space actually met to start talking about, you know, sharing satellites, if you will, to speed up that process for the end consumer. So I do think, you know, based on everything that's starting to happen, these meetings that are starting to happen with the major players, it's only going to accelerate, you know, for the end consumer getting that access to 5G and more importantly, getting it, you know, into the hands of the hotel so that they can start to really innovate in new ways because they have that speed. And I realize that's a, that's a bit of a crystal ball question. Like nobody really knows the answer, but you two have uh, unique perspectives on this space in particular, and you work for companies with uh, significant footprints and technology. So I figured, if anybody's got a decent crystal ball here, you two would. Shane, you got anything to add to that? Like, no, I echo, yeah, I echo Cedric's comments there on uh, it's here in, in various forms and it, the continued acceleration of it will, you know, and, and again, back to, I think we talked about this during our, um, um, during the, the, the podcast we had a little bit earlier, the recorded one, but the, the technology is moving at this pace. So the idea from a planning purpose is that it's coming, it's coming quickly. Um, so if I'm planning for it, you know, it's not a couple of years out, it's in, it's in, you know, it's, it, it's going to happen sooner than that. So how do I plan for that inevitable thing happening and we'll start working on it today? Right. Yeah. Um, next question. Hospitality has a reputation of always playing catch up technologically, but I can think of several places where we have accelerated transformation ahead of other industries, touchless, for instance. That being said, what brands do you see that are really breaking new ground? Well, I mean, I, yes, and I, I think the the interesting thing is about when you, you talk about the touch technology, we my, the hospitality industry launched it early, and then all, all of a sudden, it just it, the rollout and the stagnation just kind of kept on going. Right. So the concept and the idea happened in the industry, and they were ahead of the curve. And in many cases, over the years, the travel industry holistically has been ahead of the curve from the airline perspective and the hotel perspective, but then it just takes so long to roll out, then it loses its, uh, its, its, its momentum in the marketplace. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of, you know, and the great partner of ours is, uh, you know, in the technology space and, and have, has been ahead of the curve for a while. Um, usually we see some, some of this in the smaller changes, but as citizen am, and there's lots of use cases, stories out there or how they use technology to drive operational efficiency, real-time visibility into the hotel, all the way down to the room level. Uh, they use a great partner called I Reckon You as an example, as one partner in that ecosystem. Um, but you know they've 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 made it really work. But and they've been on a journey, and but they started you know I would say probably seven ten years ago and continue to accelerate and innovate from a I would say from a smaller chain perspective. As you scale out, it gets ch more challenging. But sure. you know I think the technology is there to allow companies now to scale. Um, you know, much larger than, you know, a hotel chain, which has, I think it has less than 100 hotels. 
So yeah, it, no, no particular brand comes to mind, but what Shane just mentioned, you know, that scaling effort, I think those are the brands, the ones that are global in nature and have to figure out that solution of, again, how do I provide that consistent experience or something automated or some type of innovative technologies. Those are the ones that tend to come to the table first to try and figure out automation and speed and consumer experience. Because I think what they're all starting to really try and hone in on is how do I meet consumers on their terms? And I think that's when they have that question at the forefront of their mind, that starts to turn into different strategies on how do we then get there? Is it through self-service? Is it through a robust you know, mobile experience? And so no brand, but I think all those global um, hotel chains are definitely the ones that are really starting to lead the charge. And I think, you know, selfishly, I think that lodging isn't behind in, in every way. I think that in loyalty, they're actually pretty forward thinking. And so I think they're just trying to weave that element into that bigger uh, picture of the global question. Yeah, loyalty is an interesting question, isn't it? I think you're right. Um, in so many ways, hospitality has really been at the front of that wave. Um, and so much of that is changing right now. Um, let me wait for just a moment, see if any other questions roll in here. Um, I think we've covered off everything. I'd like to thank again, uh, sponsors for this event, Freedom Pay and Microsoft, uh, you two individually for participating. Really appreciate your thinking and your energy here, Cedric and Shane. And uh, to those of you who have watched us, please stay tuned because we expect to do more of these things in the future. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone.